Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well today. I'm really not sure if this is going to be the bonus upload or second half, but it is very, very interesting. Before we get into it, a couple links. As you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon and PayPal are in the description below. The merch is displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, of Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, the links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support this channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost you a cent. Click that like button. It takes half a second. If you don't want to miss the informative and exciting uploads I put out twice daily, click that bell icon. And finally, last but definitely not least, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things, they really do help this channel to continue to grow and go. And guys, they definitely matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's get on with tonight's bonus or second half, shall we? All right, guys, uh, Friday I did a bonus upload about a family in Las Vegas and they had a UFO crash in their backyard. It was caught on a ring cam. It was caught on police body cam. And the young man who made the 911 call actually caught it with his phone. And I have a video of that young man sharing in his own words, what went on that evening. Also, the video evidence of there being a creature like he described in his backyard. Before we jump into that, I'd like to also say I've added an um, amazing interview with someone who is very well versed in the alien agenda, Dulce and the military industrial complex. Laura Eisenhower, her grandfather or great grandfather was good old Ike Eisenhower. So let's get into all of this. The only thing I can see in the backyard is a tall creature, probably around eight, 10 feet tall, very thin. So I called my dad, he went to the backyard and he saw the same thing, the same creature I saw. He told me to go inside the house at this point, we all freaking out, me and my family. And here's a video where we were in the backyard area. You can see, you cannot see it too good, but uh, on camera, but it's there. Here's a video. Hey! Professor! <laughs> <laughs> So when I saw it, it was a tall, skinny, lengthy creature. He was a gray, greenish color. And when I looked at it in the eyes, my body just froze. All right, guys, a very interesting video clip. Um, either way you look at it, him sharing what went down in his own words, you can faintly make out something. I wish it was a little more clear. Uh, but with the fact that it was captured on police body cam, a ring cam, and so many other people had seen this occurrence happen. It's kind of hard to dismiss this as uh, it being something other than he really said what happened. You know, it's so many people, the police officers believe this family. Also, it's been a month and a couple days now, about a month and 10 days uh, since this incident occurred. And I find that a little strange in of itself. So let's get into that interview. All right. So today I have an extra special guest. I have Laura Eisenhower for you guys who don't know her great granddad was, 
uh, President Eisenhower. Laura, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Thank you for agreeing to come on. I know you're very busy with life and everything in general. Um, I have been talking a lot about Dulce and a lot about the government and, you know, like the genetic kind of stuff that went down and just how the military industrial complex, uh, big pharma and big bank are controlling all of our media. And uh, I've been reading a little bit about you and I know that you've got a lot of information to share. So I'm going to kind of turn the mic over to you and uh, let you kind of lead the lead the conversation if if you would wow okay it, if you want me to talk about military industrial complex stuff in relation to dulce new mexico yeah i've got quite a lot of information and a lot of new information actually okay that has come through i know for a while most or at least some of my colleagues and myself the dulce information we had was pretty limited um most of the Dulce information we had was coming through whistleblowers like Phil Schneider and yeah. events that took place uh, during the Dulce Wars, right? Yep. Um, can you remind me what year that was? It was in the... Uh, I think it was 72. The Dulce Wars. Yeah. Right. With... Um, yeah, so, so, so what I come to discover, which is wild, uh, which um, being in this community and meeting a lot of different researchers and experiencers and whistleblowers um there have been levels of top secret information that have not been disclosed and in the last two years i found out more information than i had found out in you know the 10 or 12 years that i was uh really you know pursuing you know this kind of information in regards to military industrial complex deep ground under military bases and uh, ET government treaties, right? Yeah. So it was a huge epiphany uh, two years ago when I came across somebody named Dan Cooper. I know everybody knows, or a lot of people are familiar with William Cooper. This is no association. This is a completely different person. So I don't want people to get confused because uh, uh, William Cooper is a big whistleblower. Definitely um, a too. hero. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. Totally. But this is Dan Cooper. They're not related. It's just one of the common names, so it can get confusing for people. So just right off the bat, when I talk about Dan Cooper, don't mix it up with William Cooper, the the one that wrote the Behold the Pale Horse. Okay. Right. <laughs> and uh, who who talks about a lot of this kind of stuff? Yeah. So. Yeah. So anyway, um, like last year, sometime I don't know when I met Dan Cooper. I had just done an interview with Dan Willis and Elena Denon. Uh, we did this roundtable. And uh, Dan Willis posted it on his YouTube, and I was looking at the comments, and I see this message from Dan Cooper, who's just saying, "No, no, no!" The he's like just dropping a lot of intel. He's dropping a lot of disclosure stuff. He's just saying a lot of things. I'm like, "Whoa, this guy like knows something here." Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm like, "Wow." Um, here's my email. Like, can you like send me this, and we can be in a conversation, and I can ask you some questions. Boom, immediately he emails me. For the next couple months after that, him and I had a back and forth <laughs> through text messages, through emails, and um, and he unloaded the most unbelievable information. The reason I feel this person is so legit is because he doesn't put himself out in the public eye. He's not um, – uh, he, he, he didn't, like, come and, like, seek me out. Right. I kind of found him. Um, and, and it just, it, it just was sort of like perfect, it, 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 like no red flags, even though there's some red flags as far as the red flags that he acknowledges that I should have about him as far as the information goes. Okay. Some things, you know, I can't say a hundred percent are truth, but there are some things that absolutely, you know, are, are, you can't discredit, but you know, just like myself, you know, take it with a grain of salt, you know, take what resonates and leave the rest. We all have to have discernment. We're all doing the best we can, but you know, to have that level of kind of integrity and in conversation to like, just like do, cause um, you know, it's kind of like, who's who, like who's a double agent and you know, disinformation. Cause there's so many multi layers uh, in all of this cause compartmentalism and different projects and programs and just, yo, yeah, so it gets really confusing. So, you have no so idea who anyone is like this guy could have been just, you know, someone trying to 
ploy you out or whatever, you know what I mean? Or ploy anyone out just to get information. Right, right. So we always, you know, have to be careful. So, you know, with some of my questions and some of his answers, he's like, you know, just be just as discerning as you need to be with what I, you know, give you. Um, but um, I'm going to, you know, tell you, uh, like, this is this is the information that I have. And, uh, and it's mind blowing. So when it comes to Dulce, New Mexico, um, let me just give you a little bit more information about um, Dan Cooper. Okay. Uh, he's uh, claims to be the senior advisor to the Earth Alliance. Um, he was in some of the secret space program, twenty and back programs, um, and he was repositioned to uh, serve in a more benevolent way um, for the best interests of humanity. And I, I am sort of like off the cuff here, like I'm not going to like read a bio or anything like that. Um, so for the audience that's listening, I'm writing a book and I have a lot more material that will make more sense than I can <laughs> express in an interview. But let me just share a little bit. And when you want to go for the deeper stuff or like figure out who this person is and where this information is coming from, you know, just seek out more of my information and read my book when it comes out. And yeah, I'll put, I'll put links to your stuff in the, in the description below too as well. Okay, cool. So, um, there was uh, supposedly a unconditional surrender agreement that took place in 1952. So this is a direct quote. Ike had no choice but to openly comply with the official instrument of surrender, the unconditional surrender of the United States to the Nazis, signed by all of Congress and most of the prominent businessmen of the period on July 19th, 1952, when Truman was president of the United States. Eisenhower opposed this, the instrument of surrender of 52. He opposed it secretly by establishing various military and civilian covert units for that purpose. One of them was called Ike's Force, also known as the United States Marine Corps Special Session or USMC Special Session, which survives today. In fact, that US military unit is the most successful military unit opposing the interplanetary corporate conglomerate Nazi Draconian Empire Alliance, the ICC Nazi Draco Alliance today, by far. He ordered the first attack on the Greys, the Zeta Reticulites, deep underground military base at Dulce, New Mexico. So basically, Eisenhower ordered an attack on the Greys and the Dracos in Dulce, New Mexico. And this isn't the Dulce Wars that happened in the 70s. This is a, a Dulce war that nobody talks about. This is this level of top secret that I just got in contact with like two years ago okay. or a year ago with, with meeting this guy. Okay. So he ordered the first attack on the Greys, the Zeta Reticulines, in the deep underground military base at Dulce, New Mexico, knowing that he would lose that battle just to learn more about his enemy and to test his best against them. They, parentheses, the U.S. Army Rangers, <clears throat> also the Green Berets, lost 30 to 1 back then. This battle at that deep underground military base of the Greys occurred more than a decade before the one reportedly to have occurred in 1969. Okay, which is the one you and I are talking about. So yeah. I guess it was 19. And a much larger engagement. Several thousand U.S. Special Forces troops engaged against the Greys forces then, and nearly half of them lost their lives in that action. Ike also established the White Hats, the first of which were Texan U.S. generals and admirals. That's where the name White Hats came from. Ike's White Hats are the ones that brought Ronald Reagan into the fold right after the ICC Nazi Draco Alliance had him shot for attempting to disclose the secret space program fully. Uh, I, I mean, it's like it goes on and on and on. And then wow. it brings in the European Alliance and Balfour and all this kind of stuff. So, um, so, uh, so and, really and, quick, and, I don't mean to cut you off, but I got a question. Um, now, Reagan was from what I remember uh, responsible for like star Wars and during his administration, they said it closed down. Do you think like was start, was he shot because of that whole, that whole star Wars project and was star Wars, that project used to protect the earth from the grays and the draconians? Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, that's all connected and that's, really when the establishment of the earth alliance and when the sphere beings came in and when um the secret space programs really you know the, the earth alliance
science is pretty much like the enemy of like the rest of the levels because it's really on a ground level trying to support humanity and help humanity. Okay. Um, and that connects with the sphere beings, connects with Balthor. Um, and so all this other kind of stuff like the Draco uh, Alliance, they have a lot of imposters that will present themselves as looking or appearing to be benevolent, but they aren't. So um, this kind of galactic war uh, and what we're seeing on a ground level with military and like white hats, it's like we're dealing with like, yeah. uh, So yeah, Eisenhower, like knowing this, um, tried to set some things in place. So this cover up and all the disinformation saying that Eisenhower sold us out to the Braves with the Griotta Treaty, those are all lies. Those are all, that's not true. In actual fact, MJ-12 signed those treaties behind Eisenhower's back. Mm. And he set all these things in motion in order to safeguard us in these times that we're in. Um, But that's what we're dealing with right now. Rewritten history and uh, blaming the wrong people. Yeah, uh, And that's the kind of battle that I'm in because people are so confused. Like, oh, your great-grandfather sold us out to the Greys. And it's like, no, in actual fact, uh, you know, in 1952, uh, he tried to um, take down uh, the the bases. Yeah, And also, he tried to invade Area 51. Yeah. Um, and he lost control. And uh, so the greater benevolent beings came through to help him set up things that are... Things like the Earth Alliance, the White Hats, the Ike's Force, and um, and positive military that are going to help us in these times. I know it's like crazy, guys, and it sounds really confusing. The, the problem is, is there's a lot of disinformation. So even a lot of the credible whistleblowers didn't have access to this top secret information. Right. So they would expose things like, oh, yeah, Eisenhower signed the treaties. Because that's what they were told. Because they didn't have... The ability to access those upper levels, right? right? So even the whistleblowers thought Eisenhower signed the treaties, but in, and then they didn't know they were well intentioned. But in actual fact, Eisenhower did not sign the treaties, and he set up things to counteract the fact that it was done behind his back, and there's a deeper thing going on. And Dulce, yeah, there was a war there way before the one uh, in 1969 with Phil, what, which Phil Schneider talked about, yep. and both William Cooper and Phil Schneider have both were murdered <laughs> and tom castiello along with them yeah yeah and it's it's crazy now your great granddad definitely because what i've been sharing on the channel and what i've come across is he he never sold us out um from what i got gathered it more or less was truman that really kind of pulled the strings behind everything during that time yeah, well, it was in 1952 that the unconditional surrender took place. Yeah, and who knows, you know, what position you know Truman was in. This was, you know, the end of the Second World War, Project Paperclip, and you know the things that were going on with the with the Nazis and um, Preston Nichol, uh, not Preston Nichols, but oh gosh, there's there's one major researcher that really really uh, pulls that history together about the Khazarian Mafia and the Nazis during that time. So. In Truman's administration, you know, after the Second World War, you know, and then all of a sudden, I, Eisenhower starting to become president. The setup of like MJ-12 and the three-letter organizations in 1947, yeah, Paperclip, Mockingbird, and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, this uh, Eisenhower wanted to defeat the Nazis and help liberate us. Uh, man, he got caught up in some, you know, crazy stuff. And so, in order to hide their nefarious ways, they created disinformation kind of uh, campaign to create a disclosure that would look make it look like Eisenhower signed the deals with the grace. And that's, so we have to understand that there's false disclosure. Right. So the real disclosure is that there was an unconditional surrender agreement in 1952 and that the Griotta Treaty was not something that Eisenhower was consenting to. It was done behind his back by MJ-12 and we are now dealing with, in the here and now, this next level of uh, dark negative alien agenda that um, has nothing to do with anything Eisenhower consented to. And that's beside the point. It's like, what are we going to do as a humanity, right? <laughs> like, yeah. So Valcor and other, like the sphere beings and all these other benevolence and the guardian groups, he um, set something up for them to play a part in our world right now to counteract this level of trickery and deception. 
But a lot of it isn't that they're just going to come in and save the day because there's a lot of imposter beings that are part of that Draco alliance. A lot of it has to do with our own self-development, our own soul growth, our own ability to recognize that the war is on consciousness and, and it's on us through mind control, psyops, social engineering, and, you know, pandemic and like all the crap we're seeing in the in, in, you know, Project Mockingbird, you know, just fake news and, and the, the psychological operations on humanity that's the war we're in right now right yeah absolutely um let me ask you a quick question about now i don't know if you've because uh, obviously you have talked to a lot of people and a part of my channel a lot of my channel is i talk about you know the dumbs i talk about cryptids i talk about a lot and while i was researching dulce um Nightmare Hall was one thing that kind of really uh, piqued my interest because of what I also talk about is like cryptids like Bigfoot, uh, like the dog man, um, this crawler thing that people are seeing nowadays, this kind of human-like uh, pale creature with long arms. And I don't know if you've seen any videos of them or heard right. anything. Well, what's the name you called it? The what is, what is cra it? Crawlers. Oh, right. Okay. And they resemble a gray. And there's there's numerous kind of uh, in, encounters with them. They, they resemble a gray, but with out such a bulbous head, very long arms. And I know with like what was going on in Nightmare Hall with the genetic kind of manipulation and stuff like that. Um, when the guys in 69 uh, went down and, you know, tried to rescue the women that were being kidnapped and uh, used as, you know, everything. Um, yeah. I'm wondering if any of these, like, genetic monsters, pretty much, uh, could have escaped during that time. Have you ever heard of anything like that? Like anything about Nightmare Hall and the the atrocities that went on there and if there was any kind of genetic manipulation to create any of this stuff that people are seeing nowadays? Because they do resemble like the quote unquote aliens from TV and movies. That might have escaped and people are having sightings you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 there's so much of that, um, you know, Skinwalker Ranch and, you know, certain locations where, uh, you know, these kind of activities are happening. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of many stories. I, I'm not so familiar with the one that you're talking about, and I would really like you to send me as much information on it as possible. Because sure. I, I think I might, uh, and it, it'll, it'll flip my memory, um, if you can send it along. But yeah, uh. You know, this is what we're kind of dealing with. Um, underground bases, uh, stargates and uh, portals and opening up things uh, to higher dimensional energies. And, yeah, and, and if something can escape and, yeah, we're, and, like, the whole Mothman thing. I mean, it's just, yeah, we're, yeah. Dealing, we're, we're in a multidimensional, like, deal and there's a lot of experimentations going on, lots of labs, lots of underground bases. They're under our hospitals, they're under our airports, they're everywhere. There's deep crowd un underground military bases everywhere, like all over. Like Phil Schneider said, there's probably like 16, uh, 1,000, more than 1,000 all over the world. We know like Pine Gap and all this, stuff. but smaller versions, you know, that connect into a tunnel system. And then, of course, when it comes to child trafficking, pedophilia stuff, Mm -hmm. The Getty Museum and how that connects to different celebrity houses. I mean, there's a whole world going on, right? And then you got your subterranean civilizations. You got things like Agartha and Talos and, you know, um, higher advanced civilizations going on uh, beneath our feet. So you got underground bases with a lot of nefarious activity and you've got, you know, very uh, advanced civilizations right under our feet. You know, and, and also... Uh, beyond in the star systems that are beyond this earth right so it's very interesting what is so deep beneath this earth and what is so beyond um but it's all a part of our dna it's okay. all a part of our chakra system and the 15 dimensional time matrix and the fact that we are 12 strand dna and beyond and we're functioning at a very low level 
So when we like interact or begin to understand that these other beings exist, there's a difference between the ones that have been genetically modified, engineered, or created in a lab versus, you know, um, you know, the, the beings that are just a part of the landscape of our multidimensional self. So, and this is the thing with like my labs, like military operations where there's abductions and they're using technology to create a fake abduction scenario versus a legitimate extraterrestrial experience. So we got the military weapon sort of aspect to it. Um, and the genetic, um, sort of experimental, like mad scientists, Mengele kind of like in all the horrific MK ultra kind of stuff. And then you got the more organic sort of multi-dimensional layers of, you know, our galactic history and like our genetic, um, codes that connect to all these different star systems that connect us with these different beings that we're going to encounter. So people are going to see extraordinary things. Um, and you know, we have to be able to discern between what is holographic, what is sort of military, what is a weaponized version versus a true legit experience that has something to do with your own soul evolution and you having the capacity to switch on your dormant DNA and become more of a galactic divine sovereign being, you know, so that we can advance this human vessel and uh, get the fuck out of this prison planet bullshit. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And when you just said the the holographic, I, I had done a video about that, like I think about last week where there was an abduction, but it wasn't an abduction. It was created through this kind of secret government, you know, using holograms and making these people believe that they were being abducted by aliens with the bulbous head. And, and yet it was humans doing the thing to kind of manipulate and spread, you know, uh, disinformation. Right, right. Like they, they can uh, just say, oh, yeah, those are aliens. But no, 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 there's military behind it. So when I was recruited to go off planet, the aviary, the group that um, was responsible for that, and I know that's another like, huge conversation, um, they are connected with those kind of technologies, artificial telepathy, you know, you know, making it look like, oh, the aliens did it when it's really like a military operation. And it's, it's just so complex. It's so much to wrap one's head around. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, I know that you've got a lot, you've, you're have you busy today and uh, you, you, we were going to not do a very long interview. But um, one last question. Uh, with your great grandfather and him warning us against the military industrial complex, um, what what do you think he would think if he was alive right now to see, you know, to see where we are and at this very day and what has occurred since, you know, him being alive? Do you think what would his uh, view be, you think? I think he knows that it, it comes down to the individual because part of his speech was also it needs to be a, a alert and knowledgeable citizenry to be able to process and accept just just what what is really really going on i mean this is not something we should be waiting on from the government as far as disclosure is concerned right we have to take it upon ourselves to do the research to dig deep because there's so many layers to disclosure and um and there's a lot of trickery and deception and a lot of compromised people in the political sphere and government is just uh, it, it 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 got massively compromised as we all know so um i think uh he's really just hoping on like each individual ability on a soul level to process information go down the rabbit holes find discernment do you know the spiritual work the energy work to face your own shadow to find your own truth so that you can operate from that frequency and see through you know the distortions in the lies and find you know the truth so that you can navigate your way out of this mess and be on a healthy timeline um, that is going to lead you to a beautiful future. Um, I'm, I'm sure he's super concerned at all the different tactics being used that are playing on people, siphoning their life force, infecting their creative imagination, and leading them down a trajectory that is not going to bring you know very positive results. It's going to lead to a lot of devastation. So a lot of us are, are witnessing all this because we see friends and family that are, 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 are going off in those directions, and we don't want them to. 
but they don't understand that it's not about uh, belief systems or politics. It's about doing something else on an extraordinary level to really be able to get rid of all these things that are trying to hook into you so that you can um, really connect with the fullness of what this divine inheritance within our DNA is. Because these dormant strands connect to higher harmonic universes and all these other extraterrestrial races. But because of AI and how they've weaponized it and, and, and been able to reverse engineer and sort of like figure out a way to kind of mimic it and present like a false version, um, artificial timelines and the psyops and false narratives um, are very, very uh, prevalent and people are very vulnerable and susceptible to buying into it to the point where I, I think he's just like me on the ground level, just like worried about some of our friends and family that are going to be duped. They're going to be compromised. that are going to be hurt because of it. But at the same time, I know we both share in common that we have a greater faith that if they have to go down that road, they will hit that wall and have a breakthrough, have an epiphany and begin to wake up and begin to come home and begin to heal and remove themselves from those nefarious forces that are vampiric and parasitic that want to just assimilate them into AI and some sort of hive mind. So I, I don't know, like, I feel like him and I work so closely together that he's probably processing things in a similar way. Um, and, but I know he set some things in motion, and I think he's feeling very confident that those things are going to rise and shine, and it has a lot to do with all of us. It's not like somebody's going to come save the day, but what he set in motion is something of a presence that is here with us, a benevolent extraterrestrial or in beyond, you know, guardian presence, spear being alliance presence that's going to assist us and inspire us to step up to the plate be the best of ourselves so that we can become a team and purge out all the evils and rescue these children and 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 and, and create justice so that the crimes against humanity will no longer um be an issue so you know i just think he's right there with us just still um working with it all and me that are doing all that we can and uh, and and you know and and he loves mother earth i mean we're we're descendants from mennonites and you know just the, the close connection with mother earth and um just the abundance that we can create with the uh elementals and just the earth around us and yeah. and just working together and pulling our resources together and our missions together so that we can take care of future generations and protect our children and protect this planet um i think uh uh yeah, he's cheering us on, but, you know, we're, we're all heartbroken, devastated at where, uh, you know, people get hurt and people get duped and people get deceived. Yeah, yeah. But it's like like what you said. He he said that so we'd actually kind of not, not – but put our big boy pants on and, you know, do it for ourselves because that's the only way we're going to accomplish a win over this. So, yeah. Yes. Beautiful way to wrap it up. Yep, but that's it. I appreciate you coming on. Do me a favor, don't hang up. I'm gonna end the interview. Um, but I'd like to talk to you for one second afterward. It was wonderful having you on. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh, thanks. And sorry everybody if I talked too fast and I sent you know, it's, I we got fires going on around and like all sorts of crazy things have happened in my life lately. So hopefully uh, the message got delivered. But uh yeah, it's not easy to um, communicate right now, but I hope uh, you guys got something out of it. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you. All right, guys, I hope that the video with that young man shed a little bit more light on the update I did the other day about that horrific uh, incident that occurred in Las Vegas, the crash and seeing these creatures. The, the way he described them, if you really think about that, he he states eight, nine, ten feet tall, large, shiny eyes, huge mouth. Now, usually when we think of alien greys, they're very small mouths. What were what were these things? That's that's the question. That doesn't fit into your typical alien look um and then this amazing interview with a wonderful guest laura eisenhower 
really blessed to have her on this show. Um, when she first agreed, I, I was blown away. You know, this is a a woman who her great grandfather was the president who warned us about the military industrial complex. She, of course, in you know, studied everything that her grandfather, her great grandfather, had passed down, stuff like that. Um, just really a vast amount of knowledge in one person. And I'm glad that she was able to share a little bit of that with us. So, guys, I'm going to be uh, working on tomorrow's upload in a little bit here. I might toss a second half out later on. I'm not sure. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. Guys, stay happy, safe, healthy, and God bless all of you.